welcome back to the channel guys and i would like to start this video by wishing everyone a uh, happy holidays and uh, merry christmas i know it's couple of days late uh, to wish merry christmas but still better late than never and uh, obviously uh, wishing everyone a very happy new year and i wish that the upcoming year brings a lot of uh, happiness and especially good health uh, to everyone in uh, in the upcoming days so uh, this probably would be the last video of the year and uh, to be really honest i have been i i have been wanting to make a lot of videos uh, during this uh, during this interval i recorded uh, a lot of my battles and uh, for some battles i even was like uh, 30 to 40 percent complete in the video but uh, uh, like by the time i am able to finish uh, recording and everything uh, 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 in a video i think that featured cup it's it's removed from the meta because i think the metas are already all only lasting a week so it really i, I really don't have uh, the time at my hand as of now to uh, to push out the videos uh, very very quickly as i used to do and even even this video i think uh, e even though it's like the last day of the holiday cup but i felt like uh, i should be really making a video video uh, the last video of the year uh, so that i'll be able to convey uh, convey the message and probably like uh, have have uh, have the last uh, goodbye saying video of the year at least so uh, so so yeah i think uh, not not dwelling about a lot going into the lot of details but um, in pokemon go i have been uh, uh, doing the usual gbl battles and uh, yeah i am at ace rank uh, this season particularly has not been good for me uh, since uh, the mo meta changed and everything i don't have really a lot of good iv pokemons and i was not able to make uh, make really solid teams which was uh, against which i can get really uh, really good matches previously i was using a team uh, with obstacle nido queen and skamuri which was uh, my go to team and i hit legend with that team like pretty much for for the last 3 seasons so so i mean without uh, like let's not go deep into the detail because i have a lot to say but uh, the intro would get very very long if i do so so uh, sticking to this video uh, this particular video features wimsicott and shadow lola marawat which i feel a uh, pair against each other very well because wimsicott i feel covers alola marawat weaknesses pretty good on the other hand alola marawat covers wimsicott weaknesses uh, to ice types pretty well like stuff like Alola Nine Tails and uh, and Frostlass. Uh, those are the things that Alola Marowak can cover pretty quickly. We round the team up uh, with Lantern, and I juggle around. I, I'd normally use Lantern as a safe swap, uh, but under certain situation, you definitely would want Alola Marowak uh, going in. So uh, this team is definitely go broken by uh, Venusaur because Venusaur just annihilates uh, uh, Wimsicott as well as Lantern. So. uh vinisor elli in the lead it's basically came over but other than that i think uh, wimsicott is able to handle pretty much all the general issues which you see in in the holiday cup like altaria lantern obstagoon and uh, to some extent like uh, vigoroth as well so without further delays uh, without before starting with the video uh, and the battles uh, if you are new to the channel and you like our content don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button uh we are close to 1200 subscribers uh, which is quite neat and uh, i would like to have the momentum going on so yeah if, if you enjoy the content uh, don't forget to subscribe and without further delays let's start with the battles and see how the battle goes so let's start with our first battle of the day and we pick up a very good lead in the, in the form of this lantern and the opponent makes a swap to dance pass i really don't have a very good answer to dance pass uh, so i do a uh, chip it down a little and then swap into lantern hoping to catch a rock slide but it just happens to be a drill and which is not good for me because now i would have to shield uh, shield my lantern and as you can see my lantern is not very good ivs uh, so yeah i don't think it would have survived the second drill run as well so a uh, un bit unfortunate situation but uh, let's see how we pull this one off so 
I think I let go of this one. Yeah, I let go of this one, and maybe I come in with the uh, Wimsicott and farm it completely down. I might have to take one rock slide to the face, but uh, having an energy on Wimsicott, I guess it's pretty good because it does have access to uh, Hurricane. But my opponent, for some reason, gives up switch advantage, which is uh, essential for me because now I would be able to line up. Uh, the Alolan Marwak against the Frostlass, and I think my, my opponent must have thought that with Lantern out of the picture, uh, Frostlass would be better. But I do have a very good answer to, uh, not good answer, but a decent check to Frostlass. Uh, and the reason I said decent because, uh, yeah, obviously uh, Shadow Ball is going to one shot. Shadow Bone is uh, doing going to do a lot of damage to Frostlass, uh, but like Shadow Ball will just KO uh, the Alolan Marwak. So. My opponent, I think, at this point, must have realized that uh, it's th there is no win con for them because, uh, yeah, I would be able to uh, do a combo play, grab their shield with Bone Club, and then grass not the uh, lantern, and uh, yeah, I've done spars would be just a sitting duck in this case. So yeah, GG's to my opponent. Moving on to the next game and picking up yet another lantern lead. So this is good for me, and my opponent uh, swaps to Vigroth. Um, and I don't think that, uh, like, I feel that uh, Lantern is not a very good answer to Vigroth as well uh, because Vigroth does have access to uh, Bulldoze and if the Vigroth ends up uh, getting the shield bait, it's it's very dangerous for uh, Lantern. Fortunately, I think because my opponent uh, did not throw the charge moves at the correct timing, I was able to get to... Uh, I was able to farm them down, otherwise I don't think Wimsicott uh, is able to farm them down without taking another body slam to the face. So, uh, they, uh, my opponent brings in Frostlass and I grab their shield uh, and makes a swap to Lantern in this case. And Lantern will be able to tank the Shadow Wall pretty com comfortably. And uh, switching in Lantern to Frostlass, uh, the good thing about it is that the opponents uh, typically swap out of that matchup and which makes uh, the matchup in the back with Alul and Marowak a bit better. Uh, because now you know that, okay, if you get a sh some sort of shield advantage or energy advantage on Alul and Marowak, the matchup against Frostlass will become very good. And uh, this is, I, I, I think this is exactly what I'll do here. Uh, my opponent will go for Thunder, Thunderbolt. And uh, uh, maybe I could have uh, farmed in with Alul and Marowak as well, but maybe I didn't want to take uh, Surf uh, or maybe risk it. Um, so the stream just cut off in between, uh, so I was not able to record what was towards the end, but I was able to pull that one off. Um, so we are in sort of a negative lead with this Revenant because uh, Revenant, even though it is a grass type, it does have access to ghost type Shadow Claw, which will do super effective damage on Alolan Marowak as well. So my opponent uh, do a safe swap of Alolan Ninetales, which gives me perfect opportunity to align the Shadow Alolan Marowak to this Alolan Ninetales, which I think I would be able to completely farm it down after uh, using a shield, uh, which is exactly what I do. And judging by their team, it looks like they are running double jam uh, since they are very aggressively swapped to their uh, uh, to their Alola Ninetales. So I'm definitely expecting a Wigglytuff in the back. So my opponent lets go of the Trevenant and it ends up being a dead NA. So not a double jam, but uh, rather a double fairy strategy. Maybe they're trying to draw out um, my best fairy counter, I, I would say. Which, I, I guess Alolan Marwak did the job because now Alolan Marwak has grabbed both their shields and my opponent concedes the match yet again. So, picking up and yet another positive in the, in the form of the Altaria. And I think uh, my main reason of leading with Wimsicott is uh, there were a lot of Altaria lanterns and uh, um, Obstagoon lead which are very common. So... Uh, and I think this, my, this opponent is just core broken by Wimsicott and uh, yeah, Lantern and Altaria Court just gets demolished by by Wimsicott because uh, Wimsicott being grass and fairy types resist both, resist, like just completely walls, uh, walls Lantern and just Altaria takes a good amount of damage from those champs. I think uh, one of the biggest score breaker for this team would be uh, Venusaur because I am uh, ABA weak to it and my really only answer to Venusaur is Alolan Marowak. And even though Alolan Marowak, uh, it's it's a fire type but Venusaur hits hard with Frenzy Plant. I think uh, Shadow Venusaur does like 50% damage to Alolan Marowak with just resistive Frenzy Plant. So it's crazy. I think... Uh, uh, Except for Venusaur, there is one more Pokemon, I guess, which we'll see somewhere later down the line. Um, but yeah, Alolan Marwak is also a bit dicey because 
Alolan Marowak uh, you would really would want to go into Alolan Marowak of your own do a mirror play the mirror match up because if you go lantern there is bound to be some sort of a grass type or uh, maybe there uh, uh, Altaria coming in against the lantern which is uh, which will be their counter because Alolan Marowak if they're leading they definitely have a lantern counter in the back so uh, my I am in the soft stone matchup and one night slash does not does not KO uh, so I go for this bone club just to secure this KO onto the soft stone and uh, now they have this Altaria in the back on which I just have to land the shadow ball shadow bone uh, uh, my apologies so shadow bone will land and uh, will be enough to KO the Altaria and I take the game GG's Moving on to the next game, uh, picking up yet another Dunsparce lead. So again, this is not a very good lead for me. Uh, but it's still uh, better to see uh, the Dunsparce in the front rather than in the back. Because Alolan Marowak can only throw uh, like Bone Club, which is not a very good move uh, onto this Dunsparce. Whereas Lantern will take, uh, yeah, two drill runs would be enough on my Lantern to KO. So... I go for this grass not hoping that uh, they do not shield and let go of their uh, dance pass which is not what uh, they do. So I, yeah my opponent threw the charge move and I think they might have farmed us down. But yeah, it would be really difficult or like would be really clutch uh, because uh, yeah rollout does not basically do no damage. So I tank one uh, drill run and now I am at a lot of energy. I have a lot of energy but my lantern is already at uh, past half health. So we go for this thunderbolt uh, which will obviously land and uh, yeah and I think there is nothing much that I can do in this matchup. I need to go for uh, uh, throw this thunderbolt because I need to grab my opponent's last shield because as soon as they, they see a lone Marowak they are going to uh, shield the Altaria. Uh, so now Altaria is very low and now my opponent make makes swap to Lantern which is not quite good for me. So we go for this Bone Club. I think I could have gone for uh, Shadow Bone as well but at this in this situation I basically gave up. As you can see I'm even not shielding. One sub does not KO so um, yeah I, I in my head I basically have given up on this matchup. I thought that I would not be able to win. There is no win con but as soon as my opponent did not shield this charge move I was like okay there's there might be a win con for me, so I shield this charge move alone, alone in Marowak and I throw this uh, bone club straight away. So let's see if my opponent decides to shield their lantern or not. So they do not opt to not shield and my switch timer is up so I am able to uh, spark down this Altaria and maybe maybe my opponent thought that they would have been uh, they would be able to farm down Altaria with the alone in Marowak and throw the charge move on on uh, the the Lantern, but yeah, regardless, it is what it is. So we secure a five window in that set and was able to uh, take that one home. So we picked up a negative lead and uh, we are in a terrible matchup for uh, Lantern. The Shadow Victory Bell will be able to farm us down completely. So not in a very good spot, but uh, since I have a Lunar Marowak, I can safely uh, say that uh, it will be able to counter that a Lunar Sandshrew. So I no shield this one hoping that they threw the, throw the asset spray which is exactly what they did. So I would be able to farm them down and uh, let's see what they have in the back. So they bring in Alolan Sandslash which, just, which is quite surprising for me. And this makes me think that uh, they are uh, very very weak to Alolan Marwak. Maybe a Frost Slash in the back or uh, like what, what else maybe a Grass type like a Venusaur or something. So I throw this bone club just to uh, take their last shield away since they shielded the first move. They shielded yet another uh, bone club as well. So they, uh, I, as soon as they shielded, I decided to save my Ulan Marwak because I thought that they might be very, very weak to it. So I let go of the size punch and my opponent switch, switches into their Whimsy God, which is, uh, which makes sense uh, that why they were shielding their, uh, their Ulan Sand Slash. So, unfortunately, we get jammed down here and not able to get to the charge move. But, yeah, I think I was able to adjust my play accordingly. And uh, probably that was the best I could have done being, like, uh, super, super getting hard countered. Um, they were running double grass line. So, yeah, a bit, a bit unfortunate situation. I think if I had shielded that uh, uh, ice punch, I might have been able to win that game. 
but uh, it is what it is so we are in an altaria matchup now so i i just hope that they throw the stat attack which is exa- exactly what they did so i am able to reach this thunderbolt and if this thunderbolt lands it might be able to like uh, finish off the altaria or not i yeah i i probably was saying something else so uh, altaria farms us down and uh, wimsicott can survive on sky attack but i would like to have some help on my wimsicott so altaria will go down and i'm furiously tapping on my lolan varavax so a uh, lolan sand slash comes in and again they are staying in i'm not sure what uh, what they might have in the back uh, so i shield this uh, it's a nice punch which is quite which is not quite good so oh, oh, oh yeah i think they led with this i was too busy commenting on my other game residual uh, commentary from my other game i didn't really notice it so so yeah i think i have it in the back uh, we will be able to survive the psy shock at this range and uh, i just hope that we will be able to uh, farm them down so we are barely not able to farm them down and and as you can see that i did not throw the charge move intentionally because i wanted to get some extra energy on my uh, wimsy god because a uh, lolan marvac would just get shadow clawed down so i would be able to throw this grass knot and this grass knot will be able to take that alone sand slash so, so sometimes uh, not throwing the charge move it's it's it becomes beneficial for you so picking up a positive lead in the form of this uh, lantern so my opponent is staying in surprisingly uh, in this terrible match of lantern so uh, this makes me think they they might be weak to wimsy caught in the back so i can survive any two charge move thrown by uh, this lantern so surprisingly they are going for surf uh, i i think thunderbolt will do more damage but i'm not sure which is the more energy efficient move in this particular case so they sh- they even end up shielding this charge move so this makes me think that what they are running in the back and I uh, also return my shield uh, in exchange so I am able to farm them down now waiting for what they come back and when they come in with Altaria so again they are really core broken with uh, against them to god so I build up as much energy as I can to hurricane and throw this grass not I'm not hoping that they would shield uh, not really but Altaria is uh, so down and uh, it was a CMB die as well so probably the best situation that I could have been in and now this altaria is in potentially a surf range as well and i would be able to farm a bunch of extra energy i think i would have uh, i should have really farmed more energy there uh, of this altaria and in comes obstagon so this is really nice for me and i think it's really good that i uh, was able to save my health on lantern because otherwise uh, the uh, obstagon would have uh, done massive amount of damage with the night slash and as you can see i'm barely not in the range for uh, night slash but they end up going for obstruct for some reason so i uh, go for this uh, this thunderbolt which will do uh, lots of damage and now i at this point i was like okay should i shield or not uh, but since my defense was lowered i think it made sense to uh, you know no shield that and my opponent go for, uh, went for another obstruct and this is good for me because now i can safely no shield uh, on this night slash uh, it will not clear and throw my uh, bone club uh, to this obstacle to to secure the game. even though it's double boosted i think it will be it's not enough to knock out bone club is such a terrible move so um yeah it is what it is so we go for uh, we shield this night slash and safely secure the win on this one so gg's we got the next game uh, i think it, it's another charmer so most of the alola nine tails in this particular meta are running uh, running charm instead of pod snow even though the charm got nerfed but but i think in this particular meta with uh, all the obstagoons and altarias i think with against altaria you're all right if you're running pod snow but uh, obstagoon can really flip that match up if you're not running uh, not running charm so we go for this thunderbolt onto the altaria which uh, we are able to force a shield out of it as well and i uh, build all the way up to thunderbolt but barely not able to get to that uh, move which is not quite good because the saltari is now absolutely loaded on energy so i am just hoping that they have something weak to uh, alone marvac in the back uh, maybe some something like a cross last so um big decision for me and i let go of him to god because i wanted to have some I had had a have a jump start on my alone marvac uh, so my opponent just i think they blind swap to to uh, big earth and uh, i need really need to call their their bait here but at this point my strategy was i'll just two shield everything and uh, have a lot of energy on my on my alolan varavac and in the process i think i throw just to uh, do a check on their last shield but now i will not uh, throw the charge move and rather i would just go for a farm down on this figure 
So Alolan Marowak is now absolutely loaded on energy, and they decide to bring in Alolan Nine Tail. So I would be able to throw this Shadow Bone, uh, which gets shielded, and I just need to watch out for a catch. But my opponent uh, do a really, I, I think it's a really great catch on my opponent side. Uh, but it's it it will still not be enough because I don't think that I'm in Sai Shock range yet, and uh, I would be able to throw uh, the Shadow Bone to secure the knockout, and I I. Think that uh, maybe I I should not have thrown uh, the uh, the fire spin, but I was really confident that I would be able to survive it. So yeah, GGs. Moving on to the next game, and we are in a yet another positive lead for Wimsicott. And uh, yeah, I think Wimsicott won a lot of leads for me, and uh, this is primarily the reason that I was able to really do well with this uh, this particular lineup. And uh, yeah, but but again, uh, this lineup certainly comes with it, its own set of weaknesses, and uh, we are able to get rid of this lantern, which makes this uh, Alolan Marowak matchup in the back really good. So I, whenever the Frostlass comes in on my Wimsicott, I may do an aggressive swap on my lantern because they really then they think that uh, a lantern is my best answer to Frostlass, and uh, I would not be having anything in the back other than it to counter the Frostlass. So the, normally they swap out of that matchup, and this brings in uh, the normal type as you can see. So I let go of this uh, this body slam. I think I could have uh, just shielded and do some damage, but I wanted to do charm damage on the on this Vigroth. Uh, so in the hindsight, I might have been wrong, but like, uh, yeah, I, I think that was the right decision because uh, I was able to get a lot of damage onto this Vigroth because otherwise, if I had not done that and I shielded Lantern, so Lantern would have gotten farmed down and then uh, Vigroth would have spammed those body slams onto it. So, so yeah, it it's it's it was the right decision. So I throw this Bone Club onto this Frost Lads, and I hope that I am able to just farm it down before it able to get to the next charge move. So it's going to be tough, uh, but I think I have Grass Knot loaded loaded on the on the Whimsicott. So as long as I save my shield, it's good. Uh, but yeah, my, I think my opponent recognized that they had to you know uh, farm down my alone Marwak in order to win. So yeah, GGs. We went to the next game and uh, we were in a nine tails lead. So I do a swap, uh, aggressive swap onto my lantern, and this normal this draws out their Altaria, which is quite good for my backline because uh, my backline does not really want to see Altaria, especially that alone on Marvak. And uh, Altaria will do a ton of damage onto the lantern, but we would be able to return the favor in the form of doing the damage on of Thunderbolt. So I am not uh, really pressing on winning the switch here. My objective is to get the shield advantage and uh, then clean with Alul Marwak in the back. So I just let go of this charge move. We can survive any one charge move, and uh, now we get rid of the Sultari. And I am furiously tapping on Alul Marwak because I don't want to give Frostlass any extra energy. But my opponent really does a smart job of not bringing their Frostlass uh, because they would have they were expecting me to swap instantaneously. Had I not swapped instantly, I think I uh, would be in a slightly better position than this. But this is also even better. This is also good because I would I uh, anyway would have been in this matchup regardless. So uh, playing this matchup again in the similar way as I did uh, the previous one that I'll do shield uh, whatever they throw and then just uh, farm down. If it's a body slam bait, it's going to be bad for me, which it is. Uh, so now I think I would have to take a bulldoze to the base. But from this, even from this range, I think uh, even Shadow Lone Marwak survives uh, a bulldoze, uh, but barely not by not much. So at this stage, the game is pretty much wrapped up because even though I've move loaded, I don't think uh, Nine Tails is in uh, the Shadow Bone range. If I was running Shadow Ball, maybe. But yeah, Shadow Bone is not able to knock out the uh, Alolan Nine Tails at that range. So yeah, GG's to my opponent. Moving on to the next match, picking up a probably the best possible lead. And uh, my opponent swaps uh, into Lantern, and again, uh, my opponent is score broken by Wimsicott, their APA weak to it. So, uh, we go for the, we survive this Thunderbolt, we take it to the face like a champ, and uh, we throw this Grass Knot onto this Lantern, hoping that they would shield. Uh, they shield, uh, so this, this makes me think again that uh, they want to keep the switch advantage, and even I want to give the switch, switch advantage because I don't want uh, that Obstagoon to see my Alolan Marowak. So we are able to farm down uh, the lantern, and let's see what my opponent decides to bring in. So they decides to bring in uh, the Alolan Sandshrew, which is, in my opinion, quite spicy. And I make an aggressive swap to lantern, 
again because uh, the Alolan Sanchu has a bad match up against uh, the Alolan Marowak uh, but at this stage i was i was not really aware of the move set of uh, Alolan Sanchu so i in my back of the mind i was uh, I, i wanted to save a shield for it uh, just in case they were running some spicy move um but since my opponent shielded uh, their obstagoon so now I, i i i was pretty confident that i would be able to secure a win here and uh, uh, get this match on my side so we throw this thunderbolt which is barely not enough to knock out the obstagoon and i decide to come in with uh, whimsic art in order to just either absorb all the energy or just uh, farm it down so the i shield this first move uh, and it's just a night slash so i i definitely would have survived this and if my opponent had gotten a boost there it would have been really bad for me and i might have lost um but yeah my opponent did not get a boost and we just we are just able to secure the win now this one so yeah gg moving on to the next game and i think this is a bonus battle which i really wanted to show you guys so picking up the pro- probably the bad lead against like worst lead against next to venus or uh, the alolan marwak so i end up uh, going for the mirror match up and uh, they throw in their dead na which is quite surprising for me um but yeah we can survive any one charge move uh, thrown by dead na i mean of course they'll throw this charge because other common move for dead na is player up which is resisted on alolan marwak so my opponent is playing uh, to get uh, get the switch but i'm not allowing them to uh, to take it because i i i think that switch is very important for me so uh, they bring in their alolan marwak of their own this makes me think that they have uh, something very weak to alolan marwak in the back so they end up shielding and uh, giving both their shields to their alolan marwak and they end up throwing the charge move as well i think they could have really farm farm me down i definitely was not getting to another shadow bone so my opponent uh, is staying in this match or maybe they they are running cross slash uh, at this point i was worried because if they were they are running cross slash it's going to be really bad for me so uh, we throw this surf right away in order to uh, do damage onto this alolan marwak and then potentially bring it in charm range so they end up you having a cross slash of their own which is not quite good for me because cross slash would be able to do some uh, really good damage but charms have returned damage a lot and uh, it, it those have added up so i just uh, bank some extra energy on my uh, frost uh, on, on my lantern because they i was not really uh, aware of the energy on my uh, on the opposing alolan marwak so i just build up to two charge moves throw this surf in order to knock out the frost slash and uh, another surf to throw at the alolan marwak to secure the win so so yeah that's it from my side uh, guys hope you enjoyed watching this one and uh, i was able to climb a lot of feel over this this particular team i was able to climb like 140 50 points within within a couple of days and i played really like five not five but six or seven sets with it so yeah i think it's it's a bit late in the game but i really thought that i should uh, put up the last video of the year really and uh, And, and yeah, uh, wishing all of you a happy new year and uh, uh, I, I just pray for everybody's good health in the upcoming year. A lot of happiness and uh, uh, yeah, uh, happy new year again. So uh, until next time.